I'm not ashamed. Who are the final three kings in Judah's history and what happened during their reigns? This is the question we seek to answer today as we continue our verse-by-verse -verse study of the book of 2 Chronicles on Walking Through the Bible. The glory of his Today we're going to be discussing 2 Chronicles chapter 36, verses 1 to 10, but before we do that, let's read the passage. If you have a Bible with whom turn to 2 Chronicles chapter 36, verse 1, but if you don't have a Bible, don't worry, just follow along with us on the screen. The version that we'll be reading from is the New King James Version. So 2 Chronicles chapter 36, beginning at verse 1. Then the people of the land took Jehoahaz, the son of Josiah, and made him king in his father's place in Jerusalem. Jehoahaz was 23 years old when he became king, and he reigned three months in Jerusalem. Now the king of Egypt deposed him at Jerusalem, and he imposed on the land a tribute of 100 talents of silver and a talent of gold. Then the king of Egypt made Jehoahaz's brother Eliakim king over Judah and Jerusalem, and changed his name to Jehoiakim. And Necho took Jehoahaz, his brother, and carried him off to Egypt. Jehoiakim was 25 years old when he became king, and he reigned 11 years in Jerusalem. And he did evil in the sight of the Lord his God. Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came up against him and bound him in bronze fetters to carry him off to Babylon. Nebuchadnezzar also carried off some of the articles from the house of the Lord to Babylon and put them in his temple at Babylon. Now the rest of the acts of Jehoiakim, the abominations which he did, and what was found against him, indeed, they are written in the book of the kings of Israel and Judah. Then Jehoiachin, his son, reigned in his place. Jehoiachin was eight years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem three months and ten days, and he did evil in the sight of the Lord. And at the turn of the year, King Nebuchadnezzar summoned him and took him to Babylon with the costly articles of the house of the Lord, and made Zedekiah, Jehoiakim's brother, king over Judah and Jerusalem. We have now come to the final chapter of the book of 2 Chronicles. In our last lesson, we saw the end of the reign of Josiah with his death at Megiddo at the hands of Pharaoh Necho. In spite of his death, Josiah was a righteous king in Judah, the last righteous king, in fact, before the captivity. Following Josiah's death, Pharaoh Necho headed north to help the Assyrians fight the Babylonians at Haran, while Judah made Jehoahaz the next king of Judah. All of this took place in about 609 BC. Now, why would Pharaoh Necho want to come up and fight in Haran in the first place? Because Egypt and Assyria were allies, and so Necho was trying to prevent the complete collapse of the Assyrian Empire to the Babylonians. By 609 BC, Nineveh had already fallen, having done so in about 612 BC. This led Assyria's final ruler, along with their army, fleeing to Iran. The Babylonians continued to attack, but it took three years for Haran to fall, and with it, the Assyrian Empire officially ended. However, Ashurbalat II, this final Assyrian king, didn't die there, nor was the entire Assyrian army defeated, kicking off a four-year struggle where Egypt, along with the remnant of the Assyrian army, took, tried to halt the Babylonian advances any further and perhaps obtain victory where the Assyrians can return to power. This culminated with the Battle of Karshemesh in about 605 BC with total victory of Nebuchadnezzar and defeat of Egypt, which led to Egypt no longer playing a large role in the ancient Near East. But before all that happens, we do get this four-year struggle being summarized for us at the beginning of chapter 36, and it is after only three months of Jehoahaz reigning in Jerusalem that Necho had him deposed and taken to Egypt, where he would later die. The king that Necho set up was the oldest surviving son of Josiah, Eliakim, whose name was changed to Jehoiakim. Jehoiakim was 25 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned for 11 years in Jerusalem. But like his brother, he too did evil in the sight of the Lord, and so Judah's judgment would continue under his reign. That judgment wouldn't come immediately, however, nor would it come at the hands of the Egyptians. For as we said earlier, the Egyptians and the Assyrians were defeated at Karshemesh in 605 BC, meaning that Nebuchadnezzar and the Babylonians were the new power in the region. And so, with this change in power, Nebuchadnezzar came down and took control over Judah, making Jehoiakim his vassal. 
At the time that he did this, he also took the first wave of captives from Judah away to Babylon, as well as some of the treasures of the temple. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego would have been included in this wave of captives. Now, 2 Chronicles gives us a detail that 2 Kings left out, a detail that can be confusing when trying to harmonize 2 Kings and 2 Chronicles, which is that Nebuchadnezzar bound Jehoiakim in bronze fetters and carried him off to Babylon. The reason this is confusing, confusing is because we know from 2 Kings that Jehoiakim actually continued ruling until his death in about 597 BC, something that even the chronicler says, stating that Jehoiakim ruled for 11 years. So is the chronicler wrong about what happened to Jehoiakim? No, he just simply leaves out that Nebuchadnezzar obviously changed his mind and allowed Jehoiakim to return. Why Nebuchadnezzar changed his mind, we don't know. Perhaps because Jehoiakim repented, or perhaps because Nebuchadnezzar couldn't find another ruler that he liked to rule in Judah. Whatever the case, both 2 Kings and Jeremiah record that Jehoiakim ruled past 605 BC, and 2 Kings tells us that Jehoiakim died in Jerusalem. So that is the way to harmonize 2 Kings and 2 Chronicles, noting that the chronicler skips almost eight years of history to come to the reign of Jehoiachin, Jehoiakim's son. The chronicler says that Jehoiachin was 8 years old when he began to reign. However, 2 Kings says that he was 18 years old. Based on all the information available, it is reasonable to conclude that there has been a later copyist error here in 2 Chronicles, and the figure in 2 Kings is correct. The ascendancy of Jehoiachin to the throne will be the last father-son transition in the kingdom of Judah's history. However, he will only reign for 3 months and 10 days, and his reign is described as evil. Second Kings makes clear as to why Jehoiachin's reign is so short, which is that he became king during the second siege of Jerusalem by Nebuchadnezzar. Once this siege was over, Nebuchadnezzar deposed Jehoiachin, carrying him off with the second wave of captives to Babylon, as well as the costly articles from the temple. Ezekiel would have been among the second wave of captives here. After this, Nebuchadnezzar made Jehoiachin's uncle, Zedekiah, king over Judah, with Zedekiah being the third son of Josiah to reign and the last king over Judah. We will see Zedekiah's reign and, uh, and then complete the book, the Lord willing, in the next lesson. With that, our time is up for today. The Lord willing, we hope you'll join us for tomorrow's discussion, 2 Chronicles chapter 36, verses 11 to 23, as we continue our walk through the Bible, one verse at a time. I'm not a Thank you for watching today's episode. We hope that you found it edifying and ask that you not only subscribe to our channel and podcast, but that you like and share this episode among your friends so that the saving gospel of Jesus Christ can go out to the whole world. Amen.